This is Dr. Krauss with a video on simulating systems that have saturation, specifically some transfer function G of S and proportional control for this example. Um, you can certainly expand this to do other things. And then in the middle you have saturation caused by an actuator that can only exert a certain amount of torque or force, or maybe it's a PWM signal that just can't get above 100% duty cycle because it's physically impossible. So saturation is pretty common. It's also a nonlinear phenomenon, and so you can't capture it purely using transfer functions. Um, to my knowledge, nobody has created a Python equivalent to MATLAB's Simulink, um, and so we're at a disadvantage when it comes to doing a block diagram-based simulation. So these are going to be code-based approaches, not quite as easy to understand, perhaps. Um, I'm posting this mainly as a video supplement to my class, EGR 345. Um, so we already talked about the first part of this in class. And so if you're a YouTube subscriber watching this, um, not taking my class, you'll have to just kind of read through it. I will put the IPython notebook and a corresponding PDF on a new GitHub repository that I've created specifically for sharing code with YouTube viewers. And I'll put that link in the comments. Um, so there are basically two options. You can go through and try to figure out how to use the Python control force response method and do that for one time step at a time inside a for loop and then manually do your own saturation function before you send the input to the plant. So this is um, basically, this is the summing junction, f calculating the error, this is the G sub C controller that's just proportional control. And then this is the saturation block. And then um, I'm saving the output just to use it uh, to plot later. And then this is simulating the plant for one time step. And the key thing here is that to do this with each time step, we gotta make sure we have the right initial conditions for our states. And that will come from the previous time steps ending conditions. And so that's what's going on here. We're extracting the output from the current time step. And then we're saving the states from this time step to use the next time. So we're setting xpreve here. And the next time through the for loop, xpreve will be the initial conditions. So we talked about that in class. Have a look at this code if you're curious. And we showed the red one is the with saturation. The green one is without. And this teal line is the voltage or PWM signal, but including the positive and negative 255 saturation. Uh, <laughs> that was a random explanation in class. Um, and that's cool and it works. It's maybe a little complicated and intimidating, uh, but if your system has a pure integrator, this actually takes, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 seconds to simulate, which nowadays seems like a really long time because we're spoiled with the power of our computers. Uh, but one other thing that's worth noting, and that may also open up the possibility of doing an arbitrary nonlinear system, is to just do a pure differential equation approach. So we're going to use SciPy's integrate.ode int, which is a rung cut of 4-5 approach that requires a system of first order differential equations, which would come out of like a state space model. Um, and so if we have this transfer function, like so with its pure integrator, this is a DC motor position over voltage or position over PWM, eh, position over voltage. Um, if I were to multiply both sides through by S squared plus PS, I would get theta times S squared, which is really theta double dot, and then PS times theta, which is P times theta dot. And then on the other hand, I would get V times just GP. So this is my differential equation model. I could then define two states, theta and theta dot. And in order to use integrate.ode int, I need their derivatives. So x1 dot would just be theta dot, which is just x2. x2 dot, if I cook, came back up to this equation, um, I just subtract the p theta dot across, and x2 dot is gpv minus p x2, or theta dot. So I've defined my own saturation function, which I'll use in a minute. And then the key here is got to define this function that returns, so it, it, in order to be used with ODE int, it has to take the state vector and time as its first two inputs, and then it has to return the x dot vector. So I extract out theta and theta dot. I define an error by passing in the step response amplitude theta d and subtracting that from the current theta. 
I then calculate the PWM voltage by just taking my proportional control constant times error. And then there's this optional argument to show the effect of having saturation, not having saturation. And so if use sat is on, then I saturate my voltage. And then I return x2 or theta dot and g times p times v minus p times theta dot, which is exactly what we solved for here. Um, then I do the integration twice. So I, I call ODE int, I pass it in that function, I pass it in my initial conditions, my time, and then the optional arguments, which are KP, not, these first two, I guess, aren't optional, KP, theta D, and then the optional argument of whether or not to use the saturation. And I haven't re-executed, okay, but you can see that that's how long it takes to do the integration, which is less than a second. And then I plot those two and so this blue line with a lot of overshoot and whatnot, but a really fast rise time is without saturation. So the input here is really, really large initially. And then this green line, which a much with a much less attractive rise time and this kind of constant velocity region in here is with saturation. So this differential equation model is all it takes to be able to use this approach. And I think the other advantage is um, we were doing this in class, comparing this to an Arduino that was actually controlling a DC motor. This should look pretty similar to some of the things we did code-wise. There's a pretty decent one-to-one -one correspondence here between the Python simulation and the Arduino code to run the experiment. Hopefully that's helpful. Let me know if you have questions.